Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound and finally I can deliver a video to you not something nice and simple just to walk around showing Chris's TT and what has changed in it we got many messages from, from many of you lately asking us if we were okay because there hasn't been much happening on YouTube but it's just simply the fact that we've been so busy that YouTube is the last thing we have time for um, I'm, I'm doing sometimes 16 hour days, I'm, I'm not lying you know we do eight and hours here in the workshop, sometimes 12 hours in the workshop, then I go home dealing with business, um, sorting out everything else. It's just way too much, way too much. But, uh, you know, I'm doing my best. Maybe one day we find someone who is social media expert who can help us and join a team or something, I don't know. But let's focus on Chris's TT. So the TT was back at our place in April when we fitted a new front sub in it. And I don't think I showed the car then. Um, he just popped down, we fitted the front sub, we did a few little bits and we knew that this car would have to co come back a few more times. But many of you know this car, we, we have shared so many videos of this build in the last many years. I don't even know when, when we started this project with Chris, it's a never ending project. It's, it's, it's more than a car audio, this is, I don't know, it's a journey. It's a journey that we are both enjoying and I'm, I'm glad that I have a client and a close friend now who is so close to me that we treat this car very differently than anything else. This is a pure sound quality system, a stunning little motor. It's 22 year old now, but it's kept in a really nice shape. The only problem is that um, I know many people keep asking me if we ever take it to uh, Emma Euro Finals to Salzburg, but this is not the type of car that you want to drive so far from UK. Um, maybe if we become really rich, then we put it on a trailer and, and we should take it because many people should see and hear this creation. Although it's not looking as good as it used to be, but we're going to get there. If this car will come back and then you will see. But let's just go through what happened. What happened lately in Chris's car? So we have an Accuton, an Accuton 10 inch front sub that we had in the um, Insignia as well. So finally, this time we also managed to make a custom grille for it, so it's nicely protected. However, there's less to worry about this driver because it's not a ceramic cone. This is a uh, aluminium honeycomb cone, so you can't destroy it even if you didn't have a grill in front of it. But of course, you don't want to kick into it, so it needed a grill. Then Chris now also has a really fancy Macintosh power display that we wired to the mid base. Um, we could have wired it to the mid-range as well, but we thought, you know what, mid-base is, is the part of the system which shows the most accurate rhythm, beat, whatever you call it. And it also gives you an indication about how much power is running to the speakers. And yeah, he just, he was, he was always in love with that Macintosh display and he saw it in one of my client's cars hanging around. He had a chat with him and uh, he bought it. So the old Pioneer head unit that we had there doing pretty much nothing in the last many years because we had the Fire Depth, the M11 Pro uh, with coax running. Now we have also the HD SP5 DSP which can run um, from USB playing lossless. That's what I'm playing off now. So the Pioneer head unit was completely pointless. It was just literally turning the system on and off. But even for that we don't, we don't need anything because the uh, Zapco HDSP5 can be turned on from the remote controller and just literally press and hold the uh, the volume button and then the system comes on, press and hold, goes off. So, simple as that. So we tidied that one up, front end hasn't changed otherwise. We still have the Accuton C100 in the dash. Beautiful mid-range, favorite part of the system from that Accuton freeway. And we have my old Arco tweeters that I used first in the Honda, which were prototype versions. Since then a lot happened and the automotive range came out. And that's the C100 over there. Yeah, the automotive range tweeter is, is stunning, but this is not far behind. Uh, this Arco prototype is just as just as beautiful uh, same way a modified uh, Akiton driver is in the kicks in the good old sealed boxes and they do a good job 
Um, but Chris has mentioned to me lately that maybe I may get a green light on doing something special in the kicks that I wasn't allowed to do many, many years ago. So we will see what happens with that later on this year, but something may change there. And at the back, well, it's not looking as pretty as it used to be. Yeah, forgive me for that temporary simple panel. We just put it in to, to cover all the crap underneath. Um, it's going to come out and you know there was no point to make anything fancier because yeah that's going to be another session when he comes back and and we finish this this boot because before you remember we had dls amplifiers behind the seats uh we had a helix dsp here in the middle with a shield looking shaped panel uh edge lift plexi all sorts of things and it, it looked really nice but we changed the amps out to just just to have something new and have a bit more headroom on the system so now we have all those crazy Zapco amps that Chris modified slightly because he hates copper well I mean that copper looks nice on the Zapco amps but yeah in this car it doesn't make sense because this car is silver so yeah he painted those copper inserts in the middle and yeah we have this layout which makes the amplifiers nice looking but building panels around it is not that simple so this is also just temporary on the sides uh, we will have to come up with, with some solution to make it pretty and permanent at, a, at another time but we have the six channel running the front freeway tweeter mid-range mid base sorry i'm lying six channel runs tweeters mid and the rear feel the rear feel over there which has speaker cloth covering them and the 3D printed grill. We have the hybrid L2 SEs over there. Some of you may remember when we didn't have the grills on, but Chris wanted them to blend in. Yeah, you, you can't even really see that, especially in dark, you can't tell. Um, so tweeter mid rear fill, then one 400.2 runs the mid base up front. Crazy headroom, to be fair, overkill, but hey ho, why not? Um, and then the other 400.2 runs the front sub, the Equiton front sub with a single channel and the other channel runs now a different subwoofer. Because we used to have the FI there, however we started with Acoustic Elegance many many years ago and I told to Chris not to change it, there's, there's nothing to gain when it comes to sound quality, but we just simply wanted something crazy looking, something more mean. And the FI did that for sure. It has a bigger magnet. Um, it's just, I don't know, it looks a bit crazier. So then after we had custom looking subs built from Acoustic Elegance for us in my own Honda, in the Insignia as well. Um, and more and more people started to request that customization on the magnet. Now we came up with a completely new idea that no one has done before us. And I'm sure John at Acoustic Elegance was <laughs> not quite happy. Uh, doing or getting sorted but we got this beautiful looking you know if you see I have to keep it clean and we have to look after it because it's a nice chrome finish even on the Apollo plate on that top plate nice and shiny so now it ties into the car better that's nice and shiny same way the magnet yeah for Chris and for some people the aesthetics matter just as much so now we are back to back to square one having the acoustic elegance at the back the ib15 au it's in true ib some of you may remember if not go to description and then in the playlist sorry in description you will find a playlist where you can see all the videos of this project going back many many years when we did true ib installation of this as well here underneath the bumper we have a nice and wide oblong hole cut so that driver is in a manifold outletting behind the bumper and technically using the airspace of the cabin um, not free air it's infinite buffle check it out if you don't know much about it but uh, yeah this this rear sub works for the ultra lows below 35 hertz before some people start thinking what is this madness what is this bullshit about you know having a rear sub and a front sub why is it we have many videos on the channel explaining why you need a front sub, um, videos explaining all of that. I even have a video called uh, what's a front sub, everything you need to know about front sub or something like that. 
uh, there are a few videos explaining it and yeah, this is only doing the ultra lows all the way down to single digits it's linear down to 12 12 13 hertz i'm not lying this drops so effortless this so easily and the front sub then takes over 30 35 70 hertz range um and then mid bass and so on so this way we get pretty much everything and it blends in once once you know someone can tune and then you don't even detect the speakers they all sum up beautifully up front on the top of the dash and yeah this system is is just sublime really sublime so this is where we are with this setup i don't think i can show much more other than the emo disc is playing in the background because lately not just youtube lately not just youtube but even social media pages like facebook and instagram has become just crazy even if i share like a little story and any music is played at the background they censor it and block it straight away so it's getting more and more difficult to share any demo videos with you guys um we have to find music that you know not cop copyright related and you can also relate to you know the songs um and that's that's difficult i will have a video coming soon for you guys where i will just drop in all sorts of bullshit like literally any any crap that i have recorded lately well like from this when i fitted this sub it looks pretty crazy i was playing it um free air just hanging on the floor connected um showing the excursion of the driver because it just looks so alien when it moves with that cone and you can't you can't see the surround because it's inverted underneath the basket um plus we had all sorts of crazy stuff like we had the emerald around where we did patrick madness with uh the dual 18s in that in that pickup crazy stuff like that so yeah i will i will share a video just for fun something like that so yeah macintosh is nice and pretty now uh, we have those holes chris hates but that's uh planned for additional things we will have a ipad mounting there that he can uh, take in and out because there are m6 threads uh, bonded into this panel behind so we can both uh, brackets in and we will have a, a simple cover to hide those holes but to be fair when most of the time this car is uh, parked in in the garage in dark you don't even see those holes just now good old macintosh yeah it's, it's quite cool let's let's just play something so we can see it moving <laughs> just over a single watt yeah that's one single watt when it's 12 o'clock then it's 10 watts there 100 and so on yeah you don't need much power to enjoy music so yeah now is the hd sp5 playing from the usb then we also have the coax and we also have a bluetooth module when it can stream from an ipad so nice and easy so this is Chris's TT, where it is, as June 2022. <laughs> um, who knows how many more videos you will see from this, but as I, as I mentioned, we have plenty of things to, to play with, try. Uh, we, we do something with the kicks, we have to finish the panels at the back, make this, this car looking pretty. Again, we want a, a nice wow factor like before when we were walking up to the back, that it would look nice and pretty. We will get there again. But at least now we definitely have way better sounding hardware in the car with the Zepco gear that I, I know I, I use a lot. People know, but hey, it works. You know, it always delivers. It's predictable. 
there are better amps on the planet uh, maybe people find better sounding DSPs as well um, I know this HDSP5 is, is, is a pain to use and tune with but what comes out of it with the ESS 9038 Pro deck which we have in this one too is, is special I haven't really heard any DSP sending you know sound out of it like like this one but hey ho I haven't tried everything so I'm not saying it's the best but this is a pretty pretty nice system right now by the way I know it's too late we have a meeting tomorrow in Brighton at the marina if you are in UK and you haven't heard from this meeting yet if you don't follow our social pages Facebook and Instagram then maybe you haven't seen it yet but if, if you are around if you're free you want to hear the best sounding cars we will have more than 10 cars similar to this uh, coming then pop down Brighton Marina at the multi-story car park right at the back fifth floor it's worth pop popping popping in we will be there from 9 till probably 7 p.m. all day so you will have a chance to hear many great cars all right so I'm gonna leave it here guys hopefully you like this little update walk around video um, I, I try my best to bring more videos for you guys um, also I gotta mention go to description check out patreon or we share uh, content there regularly behind the scene content stuff we do weekly topics RT evaluations um, all sorts of things there's a lot to learn there it's, it's worth checking that out and uh, till the next one guys enjoy playing your music feel feel the freedom driving around and, and pump music and hopefully I see you in the meeting and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.